Good morning, explorers, and welcome to another episode of More to Explore, where Mike and I get to keep you in the loop with everything happening here at explore.org. And we're looking at recent recordings of Catalina's West End Nest from two days ago. Currently, the cam is down due to the passing storm, but we wanted to feature this cam and welcome their new egg. And please excuse me if I sound a little funny today. I am getting over a cold, uh, but I am happy to see everyone here in chat. I see some people saying hello. Uh, Bonnie has her party hat on. Weaponized Glitter tuning in from Switzerland. Hey, Girl Boss says happy birthday. John Lopez, hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. And today we do have a jam pack show with Dumpling Mountain came back online in January, which I believe is a first. We have new eggs and egg watch, more neighborhood nature, and at the end of today's show, be sure to stick around because we'll have a live demonstration of the new commenting system. Our director of new media, Candace Rush, has been collecting your questions about the system, and she'll be with us live to answer those questions and show some cool features. So let's get rolling, but first let me introduce myself. My name is Brian Bird, and I'll be pushing the buttons behind the scenes here. And I'm joined by my co-host, Explore.org's resident naturalist, Mike Fitz. Mike, good morning. Hey. Hey, good to be here once again. And uh, Brian, don't worry about it if you're feeling uh, you know, that your voice is a little funny because I sound <laughs> funny on the internet all the time. I make a living from <laughs> doing it. <laughs> We're happy to have everybody along for the ride today. Of course, welcome back uh, for our longtime viewers and welcome to the community. If you're new to explore.org, we're the world's largest live nature cam network with more than 180 live cameras all over the world. If you have questions or comments for us, please drop those in the chats. We'll be looking for those during the broadcast today. we got so much to talk about, as Brian mentioned, uh, including a big happy birthday to all our brown bears. Uh, but uh, right now we're looking at uh, the West End Nest on Santa Catalina Island in California. It is home to Thunder, who is the female on this nest, and Akichida, that who is the male, uh, he has a silver band on his left leg and an orange band on his right leg. Thunder has a silver band on her left leg. When you look at eagles really closely, you look at their faces, you can actually tell who's a male and who's a female and females are slightly larger than males. So those are a couple of tricks that you can use, but I think using those leg bands are maybe a little bit of an easier uh, tidbit of information to use if you're trying to tell who's who on the nest. Thunder laid her first egg in the nest of the year uh, on January 30. And last year, they success this pair successfully raised two eaglets. And we, uh, as Brian mentioned, we've been dealing with some technical issues with this cam, perhaps, uh, you know, due to the recent storms in the area and our techs and the webcam partners uh, staff at the Institute for Wildlife Studies are monitoring the camp's status. Of course, we have more news to share about birds later on in the show. Uh, but Brian, as you mentioned, you know, the winter weather has, has really brought a mixed bag for our camera systems. Uh, storm damage has disconnected some of the cams, but we were surprised when one of our most remote cams came online at a time of the year when it had never uh, been online before. Yeah. And getting to that, Mike, it seems like you're coming in a little robotic if you want to refresh your, your sure. connection real quick. So try to uh, do that. But yeah, uh, speaking of this winter weather has brought you know, as Mike mentioned, a mixed bags of things for our systems, but it was a pretty cool sight to see that Dumpling Mountain came back online. Our field operations manager, Joe Pfeiffer, worked so hard to make the system weatherproof. But as you can imagine, the Alaskan winter on top of a mountain is pretty as extreme as it gets. So to see this come back online all by itself when we got a sunny day is a huge accomplishment. And Mike, I think you have some thoughts to share on seeing the cam at this time yeah yeah sure thing and if my audio starts getting wonky again just let me know sure uh, but welcome welcome back to katmai national park in alaska this footage is from dumpling mountain on january 25 katmai is one of the largest national parks in the united states it's about the same size as rhode island and connecticut combined the camera that we're looking through is located on dumpling mountain and looks uh, toward the east across knack lake as well as to the south and southwest over brooks river and lake brooks uh, Brooks Camp is a hub of activity uh, right kind of in the center of the footage uh, right now uh, between the two lakes. Uh, but in the summertime, it's it's really where everything is happening. Brown bears fishing for salmon, but there are no people that live there in the winter. Although there could be some hardy winter travelers in Katmai, it's unlikely that a single person is anywhere within the line of sight of this camp in January and early February. Uh, and through this 
glimpse of Katmai, we also got the opportunity to spy on Brooks River during the depths of winter. Uh, Katmai, as many of you know, is home to more than 2,000 brown bears at last estimate, and uh, the bear cams at Brooks River are Exploded.org's most popular cameras. So a frequently asked question about the bear cams in summer is about the winter scene. Does Brooks River completely freeze over? And as far as I know, uh, it doesn't, and here's an example. There's always some open surface water on the river, especially near the falls. We can't see Brooks Falls on the Dumpling Cam, but we can see the area immediately downstream. Note the dark silver or dark sliver of liquid water snaking its way through the main river channel. Uh, the footbridge over Brooks River is at upper left, and that's where all the water is going. Brooks Falls is out of view, but would be at lower right. The amount of liquid water at the river in midwinter varies a lot, uh, depending, it just depends on the air temperature. The temperatures in this region can be very cold, sometimes reaching minus 30 Fahrenheit or below, but that's not a common temperature. Uh, the weather isn't as cold as farther north in Alaska, especially compared to interior Alaska, which is far from the oceans. Katmai hmm. is sandwiched between the Bering Sea to the west and the Pacific to the east and south. And those large water bodies moderate the climate in this region. When I lived there in winter, it wasn't uncommon to have sub-zero Fahrenheit weather and then have a storm blow in from the Pacific, bringing above freezing air temperatures. So although much of our attention uh, when the cam is live is focused on the Brooks River area, uh, we, get, you know, we get to see so many different details of the landscape. Uh, in the low angle of the sun, uh, in winter in the exceptionally clear air revealed details of the landscape that aren't always visible in summer so i wanted to take advantage of this opportunity as well to not only talk about brooks river but also look at some volcanoes very cool let's take a look at those right now yeah i was i was really uh eager to to take a look uh through this uh, clear winter air of the volcanoes this footage is also from january 25 uh as the auto tour on the Dumpling Camp Pams from southwest to east, the far horizon is lined with tall mountains. So basically we're kind of moving from, from right to left. And um, a few of these are active volcanoes. At center, especially like right here, note the cloud rising vertically from the mountains on the horizon. This is the steam plume from Mount Martin. It isn't the tallest volcano in the park, but is one of the most interesting. Uh, the steam we could see on the Dumpling Cam is from a crater near the volcano wow. summit yeah and i well, i've been lucky enough to fly around mount martin a couple of times just as a passenger on a flight and it is just amazing uh as as many as 20 pungent fumaroles fumaroles boil from the earth and those are basically just volcanic steam vents it has a very acid uh and, and harsh uh small pond in the bottom of the crater so Mount Martin is a fantastic mountain to take a look at. It's also very odorous when you're in the air near it. You can definitely smell it. And when we go back to the dumpling footage, uh, there are other volcanoes prominent on the landscape. Uh, on the right, as we pause uh, this clip, is Mount McGeek. Uh, this mm. volcano is a coalescence of several summits. Each summit represents a eruptive center and is the source of numerous lava flows. McGeek is also one of the most beautiful mountains in Katmai, in my opinion, covered in glaciers, several different summits. It also has a steaming crater, but it's usually hard to see any emissions from it. And then if, when we go back to our dumpling footage on the left, on the far horizon is uh, Mount Trident. And uh, that volcano last erupted in a series of events between 1953 and 1974. When you fly over it, the volcano's work is easy to see. Uh, the dark area among the gray ash is Trident's most recent lava flows, and they were largely built during eruptions between 1953 and 1960. Uh, volcanoes are an expression of the Earth's power to create and destroy as well as places that inspire human fascination and wonder. I certainly feel fascination and wonder for volcanoes and I'll never tire of exploring and learning about them. So I was really so glad to have this unexpected glimpse into Katmai's wild landscape over the winter. The Dumpling Camp came online for a little bit on January 31, February 1 and February 2. Uh, so this is a good sign for Katmai fans. On sunny days, we might get more views of this incredible place. 
And Brian, one member of the, of the Cat My community was, uh, of course, noticeably absent from the dumpling footage, and it is a, a special time of the year for them. So um, we wanted to take a moment to wish the brown bears everywhere a happy birthday. In the depths of winter, mother brown bears give birth to especially tiny babies. Newborn bear cubs are born about the size and weight of a can of soup. It may be difficult to envision the mighty brown bear as such a small and vulnerable creature, but they all start life this way. Hey everyone, this is Mike Fitz with explore.org. Let's take a few moments to explore the birth of a brown bear, an event that reveals the finely tuned adaptations that allow bear families to survive winter in safety and good health. Brown bears are born in late January and early February. At birth, cubs weigh about one pound and measure only eight to nine inches long. They are lightly furred, their ears are closed, and their short muzzles contain toothless mouths. Their bodies at this time are so underdeveloped that they can't maintain their own body temperature. To stay warm, cubs must remain in near constant contact with mother for the first two to three weeks of life. Without mother's care and attention, Newborn cubs are exceptionally vulnerable to hypothermia, dehydration, and starvation. Yet their small birth size is entirely purposeful. It allows the mother bear to sustain the development and growth of her cubs at a time of year when her body remains in a state of hibernation. Hibernation poses some unique metabolic and physiologic challenges for a mother bear. When hibernating, she does not have access to food or water nor does she urinate or defecate. With hibernation lasting several months, her body must house all the energy necessary to sustain her survival, as well as that of her expectant cubs. How does she do it? Body fat fuels a bear's wintertime survival. It provides the energy to keep a bear warm and the metabolic water necessary to keep it hydrated. Bears get really fat before hibernating, but the growth of a mammal fetus, including a fetal bear, is largely sustained with sugar and protein. Because a mother bear hibernates while she gestates her cubs, she lacks a surplus of body protein and sugar to feed cubs growing in the womb. Fetuses also produce bodily waste, which are transferred to mother through the umbilical cord and add to the physiological difficulties of her hibernation cycle. To overcome these challenges, a mother bear gestates her cubs for a short time, only six to eight weeks. After they are born, Cubs feed and grow on milk, which is an energy source that mother can produce in abundance from her ample body fat. The switch from feeding cubs in the womb through the placenta to milk sourced from body fat allows the mother bear to preserve her lean tissue and sugar while she supports the continued growth of her cubs. Milk is the perfect food for young bear cubs and they grow rapidly on it. Cubs often weigh five pounds at one month old and by the time they emerge from the den in mid to late spring, they can weigh 15 pounds or more. Near the end of January or in early February, take a moment to wish your favorite bear a happy birthday. The midwinter birth of a brown bear is timed perfectly. Cubs are born purposefully premature inside a den that serves as a surrogate womb. It is an ideal setting for cubs to grow and mature in safety and comfort. So it doesn't matter who your favorite bear is, be sure to wish them a happy birthday around this time. And Mike, although bear season is still months away, eagle season is here. So let's see what's been happening at some of our nests. Yeah, there's been a lot of eagle activity recently uh, at the Decorah North Nest, uh, for example, in Decorah, Iowa, the Decorah North female and Mr. North have been rehabbing their nests. Bald eagles add materials to their nests year after year. In the nestoration process prepares the nest for eggs and helps build and reaffirm the bonds between mated pairs. We could see eggs in the nest, uh, in this nest relatively soon. According to our friends at Raptor Resource Project, in a recent blog, uh, they wrote, as egg laying draws closer, we'll see more bonding and more grass deliveries. Eagle pairs will dig, scrape, and mold multiple layers of soft stuff to the nest's floor, testing and fine tuning the fit to make sure the nest is ready for eggs. They also note that the average date for first egg on this nest is February 
19. So coming up pretty soon. And then at the Sauces Nest on Santa Cruz Island in Channel Islands National Park, the Sauces Canyon Eagle Pair has lined their nest with a bed of soft grass. We're pleased to report as well that Audacity, the female on this territory, laid her first egg on February 2nd. The Fraser Point Territory, also in Santa Cruz Island, uh, Andor and his partner Cruz uh, have moved their nest last year, but the Institute for Wildlife Studies uh, and Explorer.org were able to install a new cam, install a new camp to see it. Cruz and Andor's nest looks well prepared for eggs. And then finally, also uh, in the Channel Islands, but outside of the National Park, same ecosystem though, on Catalina Island, Chase and uh, Cholin are busy too. Although last year, their first egg appeared on February 28. In 2022, it was February 23. So it looks like we can expect eggs from this pair to arrive closer to the end of the month. But as uh, you know, as you can see, if with more copulation, that more opportunities for eggs to appear. Uh, if you want to watch any of our eagle cams, just go to explore.org slash eagles. Brian, because of the activity, we've been able to add uh, two nests to our egg watch list. And that's right. And along with Ariana's hummingbirds, two chicks, egg watch 2024 is now in full swing. I mentioned before, yeah, the West End Bald Eagles, um, they have a, a, a their first egg that was laid on um, January 30. Uh, and like I mentioned before, if you want to watch this cam right now, um, it's offline. We've been dealing with um, some technical issues, perhaps due to the, the stormy weather recently, but we're monitoring the camera status. Hopefully that'll come back soon. It, and um, same deal with the sauces nest. Single egg there. First egg was laid on February 2, which is right on schedule for this pair according to past nest um, history, uh, but it's it's offline due to some bad weather. And I think with the, the other eagles, more to come since uh, their nestoration and pair bonding activities have been ongoing on a lot of the different eagle nests. And of course, Ariana, the, hum, the Allen's hummingbird in Laguna Niguel, California, super busy raising her two chicks. She laid her first egg on January 12th and the second on January 14th. And the chicks hatched uh, not too long ago, uh, about a week ago, first chick on, hatched on January 29, the second on January 30, and they have been nicknamed Faith and Eros. Uh, this is, uh, I think, a, a pair that we're going to see growing rapidly. Their their growth rate is incredible. Allen's hummingbirds uh, chicks usually leave the nest about 21 days after hatching, so we could be saying goodbye to this pair wow. around February 20 or 21. And then finally, I wanted to give a mention to our, our uh, spoonbills in St. Augustine, Florida at the Alligator Farm Zoo Zoological Park. Uh, we're not watching a specific nest here, but there are several different types of wading birds that nest in the trees that are visible on this cam. So if you want to see colonial nesting wading birds, great egrets, roseate spoonbills, tricolored herons, and hingas and others, check that cam out. Uh, it's a great, great uh, cam to, to see some of those wading birds. Very, very cool. Then we'll definitely keep updated with all the egg watch throughout the season, but we're happy to kick it off strong. And Mike, let's go move on to our one of our newer segments, our reoccurring segments of neighborhood nature. Yeah, last uh, during our last show, I, I highlighted the trail of a fisher wandering through my neighborhood. Uh, we also asked our viewers to share some examples of nature in their neighborhoods, and we I think we got some great examples sent into us, uh, Brian. So uh, Jeanette from Australia, she uh, sent in a, a picture, this picture of a male gang gang cockatoo feasting on a, bl uh, in, in, uh, on a black cypress pine. Jeanette writes, um, this is in my garden in Canberra, Australia. I planted this local species to support wildlife. The gang gang is now a nationally endangered species. So it was deeply gratifying to see it using this habitat I provided. And I can't agree more, uh, Jeanette. One of the best things that we can do for wildlife is make our home landscapes, our home habitats more habitable for uh, animals. So whether you can, you know, you can plant a tree that wildlife uses, or you can let a, an area of your lawn go wild, that provides wonderful habitat for animals. And we can welcome animals, more animals into our neighborhood through that. Very cool. So Mike, before for, we get to the, the yeah. next one, if you want to reset your connection real quick, I think it's dropping a little bit. Okay. Hang tight. Sure. 
And while Mike does that, we'll move on to our next one. We had Martha, which she said, I watched this hawk for a couple of days in my yard. Uh, finally had a songbird feeder and wallet. And I got a photo of here. She, I look up every time and go outside for the hawk, eagle, or some big bird. Watch them as long as I can. They are so beautiful. And what a beautiful photo that is of this hawk. Great, great photo. Um, and uh, I, I was wondering, Brian, if this was a sharp shander or a Cooper's hawk. Um, I'm terrible at identifying <laughs> those two birds. I think this is a juvenile of those species, though. So if uh, maybe one of our more uh, knowledgeable bird watchers on the cams can ID that bird uh, for us, that would be that would be awesome. A uh, couple more to share, though. And one is of elephant seals from Karen Fong, who is a docent at uh, at Point Reyes National Seashore in California. Karen writes in exciting times during my volunteer time as a winter wildlife docent in the park. And yeah, if you ever have the chance to go see elephant seals at Point Reyes, it is an amazing experience. So thanks for sharing those photos of those lovely <laughs> elephant seals. No they're so noisy when they're in their rookeries. Um, you know, competing for for mating opportunities, giving birth. It's a really an incredible experience. And then finally, uh, Shelly Belly uh, wrote in and said, we live in Northwest PA in a very small rural town in Jackson Center, PA. If you don't know what PA stand for, that's Pennsylvania. That's how people from PA say it, like myself. And you know that Shelly Belly is probably from PA because she wrote <laughs> in PA. Anyway, I heard uh, Noy, she writes in and says, or he or she says, um, I heard I I heard a noise and looked out my door and saw a black bear prints. Got my phone to get pictures. Later we measured a couple of prints and the front paw was larger than a saucer. We figure a pretty decent sized black bear. So yes, awesome sighting there. And it's a good reminder that black bears can be active in different parts of North America right now. So if you have attractants near your house, like bird feeders, for example, or garbage, you want to make sure that those are secure so black bears don't target those as a source of food. And thanks to everybody for their submissions. Uh, if you want to uh, submit your own neighborhood nature story, um, you can write to feedback at explore.org with the subject line neighborhood nature. It could be anything that you want to share with us that's nature related, wildflowers, trees, vertebrates, invertebrates, maybe a, a cool mushroom you've been watching. Uh, if you have a microscope, you're looking at microorganisms or plankton. Uh, maybe you just enjoy sitting or standing next to a water body. And I'm still waiting for somebody to share a spider that they live in the corner of their house. So <laughs> if you are doing that, please send that in to us. I'd like to get to know your local Charlotte, the spider. Uh, but yeah, thanks to everybody who has submitted uh, so far. Very cool. And I look forward to seeing all the new submissions coming in the next couple of weeks. And we'll announce uh, and share some more stories uh, during our next show. Uh, moving on to our next segment, we want to highlight one of our evergreen cams. And this is actually a new one because many of our cameras here on explode.org are seasonal, but there are also many that are live year round. So, and this is actually a new set of manatee cams um, set for in Silver Springs. Yeah, this one has really been um, fun to watch. I, I love the, the 180 underwater cam because you can kind of pan around on your own using that. So this is with our new, our camera partner, Save the Manatee Club. And it's located in Silver Springs, Florida. So like other other manatee cams, you may be able to see um, manatees gathering in the water, especially during cold weather. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been loving the views, especially on that other underwater camera. Yeah, it's, it's definitely fun to be able to control the camera yourself. So you can see I kind of demoing right here. I can just follow this fish. It's a lot of fun. I've spent a lot of time playing around with this camera. <laughs> and coming up this week, we have uh many events starting tomorrow tomorrow morning we have our usual africam show if you need to go on a virtual live safari join us tomorrow at 6 a.m pacific time and then mike you're hosting a live chat with utopia village on wednesday at 4 p.m and then that's right you want to say anything about that one coming up well, this one, I think this one will be interesting because um, we're going to be talking with with Paul at Utopia Village. Uh, he's the owner of Utopia Village. He's transitioned that site 
from what was a dive resort into um, a place to, to help the, the local community. Uh, we'll get to learn a little bit more about that story. And then also just, uh, you know, have him share his knowledge about the fascinating wildlife and the reefs that are adjacent to Utopia Village. Super cool. I'm excited for that one. And then, so that's coming up this Wednesday. And then the day after that on Thursday, we have our usual wild moment show where we get to see all of the best highlights from the AfriCam cameras. And then because we won't be live next week, we will, uh, I wanted to say that we are also having a live chat on Manatees on February 15th at 4 p.m. Pacific. So definitely tune in for that one as well. And so these are the live events coming up, Mike, but what cams are you looking forward to watching in the next couple of weeks? Well, I, I feel like I need to to um, refresh my knowledge and, and gain more knowledge about the the places I'm going to be host, co-hosting those live chats uh, about. So I'm going to be I'm going to be focusing a lot on manatees and I think Utopia over the next couple of weeks. Well, what about you? Very cool. Uh, definitely a, a seasonality. Uh, one of the cams that are evergreen. It's on year round, but definitely a seasonality is the pipeline surf camera which is so much fun to see this time around. And then you see like some of the different uh, surf tournaments. You see some surfers catching some big waves, which is always fun to see. And if you want to keep up with Explore.org on your favorite social media platform, go ahead and follow us on any one of these platforms. You see one of the clips coming from Utopia Village. One of the, I believe is a spotted trunk fish coming up and saying hello to the camera. Um, hmm. There's a, a great clip to see. But Mike, as far as getting involved with Explore.org, people can you know, subscribe to our social media, but how else can they get involved? Yeah, we uh, have opportunities to volunteer at Explore.org. If you uh, think you can contribute to becoming a camera, vol camera a volunteer camera operator or a moderator for our chats, we're looking for help. So um, go to Explore.org slash volunteer, fill out the form, and we'll get back to you with some uh, more information and thanks to all of our camera operators and moderators for their hard work awesome and that usually does it for about the show but as i mentioned we have a special guest and a special demonstration from our director of new media candace rush so i want to welcome candace now <clears throat> candace welcome and i'm excited to see this demo Thank you for having me. It is great to be here. It's been a minute and we've had a lot of updates on the comment system since we initially launched in October and I had my last demo. So I thought I'd get on, answer some questions, show you guys around and, uh, you know, just introduce if you to the new comment system if you haven't seen it. Um, Let's start, I know I have a graphic up here about the, the live cams that you can currently use the new Explore comment system on. It's on about 40 cameras right now. Um, and okay, here it is, Katmai National Park, all of those cameras, all of the panda cameras, including the Red Panda, Service Dog Project, Ariana Hummingbird, International Wolf Center, Utopia Village, Turpentine Creek, Kitten Rescue, West End, Two Harbors, Luby Bat Conservancy, Pipeline, Waimea, and this channel, Explore Live Events. So if you want to get down in the comments there, type it out, see how it's different than what the Discuss system is on, on the other pages. Um, so uh, th we got a few questions about bugs. And um, unfortunately, for some of those, I'm going to have to ask you guys to email feedback. We'll get through those. I'll give you my best impression about what might be happening. but when you have a bug on anywhere on Explore, please email feedback and we can um, get into it. So let's just uh, start with the, these questions. Right up top, um, what, why does the link for Two Harbors notifications take me to the Decora North page? <laughs> um, yeah, that is definitely a bug. Uh, it is in the fix in the next release. So there should be one coming out uh, in the near future. Basically, um, that board is connected to the wrong board. Those notifications are connected to the wrong board in the back end. Uh, so the devs are spotted the problem. They're going to get a fix. Very, very sorry if you're a Two Harbors chatter right now and you're having a hard time getting through to your notifications, but that will be coming through soon. Um, the next one, in the beginning, I could archive individual comments as I found them after the update that disappeared. Uh, that was just an oversight that uh, that feature will be coming back. So if you're not sure what this commenter is talking about, um, before, um, I only have one, <laughs> one notification, but before you could mark individual comments as read, now that little 
feature is gone from here and this is mark all as red so uh there will be a little envelope right here where you can mark individual comments as red if you want to save that notification for later if you know you have to respond to somebody but you don't have time um, that will be coming back this next bug um, has been persistent and annoying for all of us why do i have to refresh to see new posts or comments that is um Basically, so the, the problem here is that this bug isn't actually throwing us a lot of errors to look at, so we don't have an error to see, which is why it's really persistent. Um, it's just sort of not fetching the comments as we expect. This bug is probably at the top of the list of ones that <laughs> we're trying to knock down right now. So uh, as I go on and talk about some potential new features we're thinking about, all of that really does hinge on us fixing this bug and then the photo upload bug as well. So this is um, really, really high on the list to be fixed, but it has to do with uh, just the, the real time like fetch from our website not working uh, the way that we are expecting it to. Um, even if something is a known issue like this one, um, please continue to use the bug form and post about it. I'll link it in the comments when I'm done here. Um, but uh, that really has helped us troubleshoot other bugs in the past. So if we're not getting an error, maybe if you guys report enough, we'll be able to find uh, some commonality between your reports. Maybe it's time of day, maybe it's browser, maybe it's operating system, maybe it's version, we don't know. But the more you guys report, the more information we have and the faster we might be able to, to fix it. But yeah, I am. this is uh, at the top of everybody's list on the comment team. Um, this is the next bug I sort of hinted at previously. Why are some people having trouble uploading pictures from their computer? We see you, um, <laughs> Book Mom has also been having this problem. This bug really seems to be picking on individuals. Uh, we have an update to the way photos are uploaded in the next release that will either fix the problem or it will give us some more information. This is another one of those problems where Users are getting something that's just network error, which is very, very vague, and it's hard for us to work with. So uh, we've readjusted the infrastructure on how photo upload is handled to hopefully fix this issue. But if it doesn't fix this issue, it's designed to give us some more information about why it's failing. So I do have some hope that this issue is going to be fixed in the near future. Um, but yeah, there is a, a few people who it really, really is picking on and uh, I want to shout out our mod, our Wanamaker. She has been extraordinarily helpful in troubleshooting this since nobody on the comment team can make this happen ourselves. Um, our mod, our Wanamaker has been really, really uh, available to us, tracking down all the issues, sending all the screenshots, giving us as much information as possible. So uh, when we get this fixed, it will definitely be <laughs> on the back of her troubleshooting. And just, um, what else? Um, so this next question, one question, how does it work? I have no chat room anymore on my Firefox. Are my settings correct? Uh, there was an issue pretty early on where the new comments weren't loading. Uh, we think we got that fixed. If you're still having issues loading, please either use that bug form or email us on feedback. So the person specifically who emailed this in, please email us in feedback, maybe with some screenshots of what you're seeing, what camera you're on so we can help troubleshoot it make sure it's not a discuss board that's not loading and it's actually our our board that's not loading as we roll out there will be some confusion between is it discuss that's having a problem or is it us that's having a problem but um we'll get through it all together but yes please email us at feedback at explore.org there is also you don't even have to go anywhere you can just pop this open right here type in your and we get it you don't even have to leave the page uh, so we'll more information on this one it's always helpful if you have a screenshot of what you're seeing but uh, we can sort of troubleshoot with you specifically more in email um, this is another one that's potentially not comment related but I wanted to answer this for you <laughs> I'm unable to log in even when I put in forgot past email and yes I have checked my spam this is very specific you're going to need to email us at feedback from the email that you're having a hard time logging in with because that's the only way we can verify that you owner of the account in question. So please email us from the email that you're having a hard time logging in with and we can 
check our database, see if there's any issues, manually reset your password for you. Uh, but you do have to email us from, from the exact email that you're having a problem with. Uh, so if you don't have access to that email, I'm really, really sorry, but we do need to verify that you own the email <laughs> before we can uh, continue to help you troubleshooting logging in with that account. But um, please email us and we hope we can get through it. We've had a couple login issues recently um, as we've made the switch. So we've been able to get through them with most people. So if you're having issues logging in, see us at feedback. We'll definitely get you access to your account back. Um, and that actually does uh, bring up a really neat. So with the new comment system, you're going to need to be logging in up here at the top. When you're not logged in, it says log in or join. So you're going to need to be logging in up here. Um, if you are on discuss, oh, we can see this on this border one. Um, if you're logging in here, this is very likely that you had a discuss only account. And to continue to comment on the new comment system, you're going to need an explorer. If you're logging in at the top of the page uh, and not in the comment system down here, and that will confirm that it's an Explore account and not a Discuss account. And that has been, I know we sort of understood that that was confusion, but if you're confused about what kind of account you have, always email us at feedback. We'll be able to sort that out for you really quickly. This next question is a very, very popular one. Is there a way to follow people so I don't have to remember the person's exact free na screen name and I can find their posts and comments? This has been such, such a popular request. Um, so this was a feature that Discuss had. It's not something that we implemented initially. Uh, part of it is because I've sort of got to be in my bonnet about privacy. Currently with Discuss, all of your comment history is public to anybody that clicks on your profile and anybody can see it and the user doesn't really have a lot of control over that. So our first um, point is feature that we're looking to, to roll out is to let you view your own comment history in your profile. So we still have to build that you, but it will be somewhere in your profile here where you would maybe there would be another tab perhaps here that says comment history instead of just notifications. And uh, once we do that, where you can view your own comment history, then the idea is to let people opt in to make comment history public. So, so it's going to be private by default. And if, if you want to share your comment history with other people, then you can check a box or that you know that comment history to anybody that clicks on your profile. I know that Mike Fitz probably wants his comment history to be profile. He shares a lot of really good information, maybe some mods, but we're going to let users control people can see their whole comment history or not. Um, so then uh, it's coming down the road a little bit. Step one is going to be letting to people, letting people view and search and have access to their own comment history. That is step one, which brings me to the next question. How do I filter for my own comments? Right now, uh, not possible. That is a feature that is on the docket. Uh, so in, in theory, it's going to be uh, somewhere in your profile where you'll be able to scroll through, view all of your own comment history. But that is coming. Um, next problem, uh, if I click an image to see it larger, if I go back, it changes the camera to Decora, not what I was just watching. If I close the image, I'm kicked out of Explore entirely and I have to start all over again. If this was how it's designed, it's a bad design. I can promise you that it's not how we designed it. Um, but this is one of those where I do need some more information about what device you're using. So if you're an issue, please email us at feedback or use the bug form. My hypothesis is that you're on mobile and when you click an image, it's opening the image in a new tab. And that, that's why it looks like you're being kicked out of Explore, but that wouldn't explain why it would log you out. Uh, so there's some questions I have about this. So please email us in feedback and we can troubleshoot this further. If you're, there's more than one person having this issue, please let us know. This is the only report I've seen of this kind. Um, so I hope it's unique and not persistent across multiple people, but please let us know. I included it so that if you're also having this issue, you can know that 
other people are and report it. Um, the next question, why can I only scroll through all of the new notifications from the new link window and not if I use the bell icon? So this is also going to be fixed soon. Um, I wish I had more notifications here. <laughs> so maybe demonstrate this to people. Uh, this window, as it expands, uh, has like a scroll bar. And some people, the scroll bar is not scrolling all, to, all the way to the bottom. Um, and so the only way they can see go to the to the notification page themselves. So we've tracked down that bug. Uh, that one should be fixed soon, hopefully in the next release. Uh, sorry <laughs> if you're not see them. Be all the way to the bottom, and then it'll have like that same load more, and then you can read through all of your notifications. The scroll bar is not always appearing for everybody, so we have a fix in place for that one. Uh, the next question: Why does Mark All is Red only work on the bell icon link and not in the notification? So they're asked, Why does it only work if I mark All is Red up here? But it's not working if I mark all as red here. Um, and so this is this is one that we've also kicked back to the developers to have them look at. I'm guessing the button's not registering as it should. Uh, it seems like it should be an easy fix. So we hope to have that one in soon as well. Um, this next one simply, uh, comments don't always show up. This one, it'll be helpful for us to know what uh, what camera you're on. Are you on one of the cameras that has the new Explore comment system? Or are you on a, um, because those two systems function pretty differently. Uh, but pr early on, as I said, we did have an issue where the comments were loading all the time. So if that, that one has reared its ugly head, uh, please continue to, to use that bug report form and we'll uh, try to look into why it has returned and uh, get it fixed as soon as possible. Usually, we in the past have fixed that by refreshing the page or <laughs> when it was first happening got around it is I uh, clicked this show comments only button and that triggered the page to load. Uh, so that's not an ideal way for things to function, but it was uh, around while the bug was still active. Um, this one I feel in my soul. Um, why must I update filters every single time I sign on? I never want to see off-topic comments, but I have to update the funnel every single day. Um, now, the comment board doesn't remember your settings in any way, which is why every time it refreshes or every time you sign on, you have to update those filters. Um, so top of the feature list that they're working on in the future is to create comment settings so that potentially will be a settings wheel up here, or maybe it'll be in your pro uh, where you can sort of set the defaults that you want in the comment board, and it will automatically load that every time you come to the page. So if you never want to see off-topic comments, if you always want it to be in high contrast mode, if you always want to hide media, um, you can set all of that in your defaults, and then every time you come to explore, it will remember that. I understand just how frustrating it can be to have to redo that every single time you change pages, especially for me, I'm on Explore all day, every day, changing pages all the time. So uh, top of the list of new features that uh, we're going to add for sort of quality of life. Um, this next question, hi there. I have noticed sometimes comments and questions on cams disappears, even sometimes snapshots. This one, I have a strong suspicion that you were on a discuss comment board because this is one of the ever present and persistent discuss bugs that we, um, that was one of the reasons we started to build this comment system in the first place. So if this is happening on one of the new boards, please let us know. We can track it down and fix it. But I have a theory that this is on one of the discuss boards. We've given this bug to discuss so much and they have done nothing about it. It's been a problem for years. Um, I'm in a staff member at Explore and my snapshots never post, like it's wild. So um, yeah, please, uh, when you're doing uh, the bug form, make a note of which camera you're on uh, and that'll help us determine if it's a discuss problem or if it's an explore problem and we can filter the, the problem accordingly. Um, next one. Uh, and I want to highlight this one and then the question after it sort of in parallel. Why do messages frequently pop up stating that there are new comments above? 
The message appears right across the comment sections that viewers are already reading, as well as any photos that they were looking at. So uh, this, this chatter is think, talking about like if you're scrolling down, sometimes there will be a little blue banner here. It says new comments above, you click it and it takes to the top. It's clearly annoying, this particular chatter, uh, but it is one of the more popular features that, that people have asked for, um, as evidenced by the next question. Um, when I when do when do I get a notice for my discussion that there's new comments available? I only I notice it's only for new posts, not as wondering if the chat board has a way to give notice for new reply as well. So this person wants more out of that new comments above. They like it, they want it to give them more. Um, and so this is really one of the, the hardest parts about building a new comment system in, is that everybody's going to want different things out of the experience. So to that end, uh, 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 maybe this afternoon or tomorrow morning, I'm going to be posting uh, uh, to give and get an idea about what the most people want out of those features. Uh, the comment feature seems pretty popular. Um, I'll include it. I think people want it. Uh, the reason it did work is because that reply functions a little differently in our system. So you want to why there is, I have to find a thread here somewhere, but there will be like a, a bold on this side that says new replies, but there's not like a banner that takes you there. It's less obvious. We did talk a little bit about including replies in comments um, banner in December, so I can talk to the team and maybe revisit that if that's something people want. Um, but I can include a question about that in the survey I'll be posting later this week. Uh, the next question, uh, prior blocked posters are now visible. Some, I think, have changed their ID. If I block them again and realize I made a mistake, can I now unblock them? Yes, this is one of the features that I never addressed that you could never unblock somebody. So. Uh, before and discuss are different. We couldn't carry over your block settings. We couldn't carry over banned users. We had to sort of recreate that. So if you block somebody, you will have to re-block them in our system. It's a new system. We couldn't transfer that data from your discuss account into our comment system. But um, I will uh, show you can unblock somebody. I'll be rolling trouble. Sorry, you're um, not. You're always in our chats. Uh, and we love you, but I'm sure you want to block. Yes, users now blocked, all, all those gone. If you want to unblock somebody, it's very easy. Um, in this same notification, it says blocked users here. Simply click unblock, <laughs> successfully unblocked. And if I go back to the uh, live chats page, I should see all rolling in. So, Simply is going to your notifications, hitting unblock. Very happy to do it. It's easy in that drop down to click block instead of hide. It's super easy. So you can go through and do that. Um, still having problems with photo stories. Can't get any text after the picture. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. So the way that photos are currently um, implemented, and maybe I'll go to one of the brown bear pages for this since you guys really do the most photo stories. Um, so right now you have the link, paste the link where you want it in the text, uh, copy a link, paste the link where you want. There's going to be an update into how this works, but I'll, I'll show you how it works now and then I'll explain what our update is going to be. Uh, let me get some photo links and I can show you how this will work. If the snapshots load. So you're going to right click an image and it's going to be, you're just going to hit save image address or copy image address depending on what. So you're going to testing photo stories. You uh, can upload a photo from your computer, like this, open. And then once it's here, you can copy link, or you can right click and you can copy image address. 
and then you paste it there. Right now, this little thumbnail is still here. You can delete that after it's been inserted into your comment. You can also go to any other photo on the internet and you can also copy that image address. Um, copy image address, testing photo two. And this is just another link go like that. And that's how you do it. Now, um, there's going to be a new way, simpler way, a better way where, and this isn't out yet, but it will be in the next release where you do, where when you upload a photo from your desktop, there's going to be a little button in that thumbnails here. And if you hover over it, it'll say insert into comment and it'll pop it. You just hit that button, it'll pop it into the comment where you want it. So you can type something, it'll hit this, it'll say insert into comment, type something else, upload another photo, insert into comment. So you won't have to deal with the copy image address situation. Um, so that'll be easier. That's coming in the near future. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped. Uh, the way that photo stories now is um, not the cleanest way. So we're hoping the update is easier to use. Um, next question. I am used to the, to the discuss comment notification system. Can you take us through the new system and any workarounds still in place? So the biggest update to the com to the notification system is this bell icon right here where people um, can, I'm gonna go back to the live chat real quick. Uh, where this is where you'll have the, all of the comments. Um, if you, I want somebody to reply to this. Someone. And then I can show you some of the stuff that, um, some of the stuff that works. You can look at it here. You can also go into your profile and see your notification. Uh, here's where all of your old archived notifications are. You can all that in the little bell icon, archived notifications. Uh, we, some things where it says now, instead of getting like a bunch of individual reactions that people, individual notions that people reacted to your comment, uh, it now says you Stitcher. Okay, so this is a very fun one. Um, you can now reply. Thank you, thank you. To the comment there, rightly in the notification bell. Uh, just like you used to be able to in Discuss. Um, consolidating reaction notifications so you're not getting like 500 separate reactions that somebody <laughs> has reacted to your comment. Um, and that's sort of the mix of the notification system. Uh, we're really, really excited about this update here that you could read comments without opening a new page and that you could reply in the comment itself. And then you can sort of do all the regular comment formatting. Um, and so uh, maybe I'll run through what all this stuff is for people who don't know. So this is your regular comment box, and this is all of your comment formatting. So uh, you can make it bold, you can make it italic, you can underline it, you can strike it through. You've seen me use this button already. This is an upload button. This will upload media from your computer. Uh, this is if you want to attach a link. Maybe you want to attach a link from another website. It's there, you'll save, and then that's a link. Uh, and this is all the emojis you can add to your comment. Um, so that's the basics of that. Uh, there's also this fun off-topic button. This tags a comment as off-topic for the board you're on. I know that there is some confusion here. People have, and I under, totally understand why you would think that. Uh, would think that this off-topic button would send it to the off-topic page. That's not the case. People can now chat off-topic on the comment board that they are on. They just have to tag this as off-topic so that people who don't want to see off-topic stuff can hide all off-topic comments. Um, but it is sending an off-topic comment to the board you're on exactly there. It's not going to another board. It's going to the board you're actually chatting on. Um, which brings me to the filters. So top filter, show everything, show only off topic, hide all off topic comments. I'm gonna do a hashtag, Otis, he's a popular one. Uh, make sure you click it 
to make sure that it's actually here um, or else it won't load the board. You could do that. Uh, you can do mod post only. You can search by date specifically. Um, and then when you're done picking everything you want, you got to apply your filters. Nobody has talked about Otis on this chat board. Uh, and then when you're done, you can reset your filters. There. Uh, and that's the basics of the comment system and the notification system. Thank you, Brian. Um, OK. Um, this next one is very interesting. Uh, I'm wondering if we can mark replies as private. I want to respond to something looking for additional people at Brooks Lodge, but I don't want to my email address in the comment. Uh, generally, we strongly discourage and we'll even remove comments that people do not want you guys to get taken advantage of in any way. Um, this is not something that we're currently thinking about, uh, but I understand the inclination to wanting to mark some communication as private. So maybe we'll brainstorm what uh, this might look like and uh, get back to you guys. Maybe I'll put this in the survey as well to see how people feel about wanting some private communication. Um, uh, next one, sort of long. Brian, I wonder if it will fit in my box, but the whole context is somewhat important, so I will read it all. My screen name was created on Explore in 2013. It's my only Explore screen name. It will not open with a Discuss account. How will I be able to see my older comment history from the past 11 years once the new comment system has been distributed on all of the cameras? Uh, as basically, it's, you know, how can I see my old comment history? So if you were logging in previously with just using single sign-on um, and you didn't have a discuss, how are you going to view your old comment history? So it is still possible for you to view that comment history. Uh, you won't be able to log in to discuss with it, but find a board right now that doesn't have the explore comment system on it. You go here, you just click view your profile. Uh, you can view on discuss here. Oh, and then it will, because oh, uh, I can share this tab, okay. Um, and it will, I didn't, I haven't commented much with this account, but you will have your discuss comment history here in this link. Uh, bookmark it, control D, command D, whatever um, browser you're on, you can mark that your discuss profile for your old profile to continue to view it there. Uh, share this tab. Up. So we'll do that one more time. Go to click view your right here. It says view on discuss. It will open the discuss page in a new tab. Bookmark that tab. That's how you'll be able to save it. It will exist for as long as to score discuss wants to post their own common history. Don't know how long that will be, but it will be open as long as Discuss is open. Um, the next question, font size, type size is smaller and fainter than an older versions. Yes, uh, we did two rounds of testing on the new chat system, uh, and that didn't get flagged as an issue. Um, but we have had enough people ask about it that we are investigating the possibility of um, font control size in your own settings. Um, so maybe that'll be up here at the top of the comment system somewhere. But uh, font control is on the list of features we're investigating right now. Um, the next question, is there or will there be a link to view the old pages before the switch arrives? So yeah, we'll be, uh, be more intentional about posting the links to the old discuss boards on the new pages when it switches over. We'll do that in the pinned comments when we switch over. Make sure you guys still have access to the old boards for those pages. Uh, those pages will be around as long as Discuss is around. We're not deleting our Discuss account. We're not purging anything. So they'll be around to view as long as Discuss is around to view stuff. Um, and uh, I've been talking for a while. Last and final question I had queued up from uh, last week was, when will it be on all the cams? So we're doing this rollout slowly so that as it rolls out to a new set of communities, we can be in there and help them troubleshoot and work through the change. Uh, but our hope is that we have it 
on all of Explore by the end of March, although a lot of that does depend on a couple bugs being sorted, specifically the refreshing to see new posts bug and uploading media. Uh, we get sorted before we go site-wide with it. I'd also like some uh, more of the features I talked about to be there, being able to see your own comment history, some stuff like that. Um, like that to be a little bit more fleshed out before going site-wide as well. But the idea is to have it, fingers crossed, toes crossed, by the end of the first quarter, which should be end of March. Whew. Um, okay, I have talked a lot. Um, is there anything else? that I missed, any questions that came up, I was talking. Oh, sorry if my audio was weird. Um, I'm in a different location than I usually am. So the internet not as good as it usually is, I apologize. Um. <laughs> oh, Stitcher, I love that. I have resisted using it before because I didn't want to continue to harass you about stuff you already know. Please continue to harass us about stuff we already know. One really good example about why using the bug form is very critical, uh, the, the bug that got fixed in the last release, if you were on an Android phone, uh, it would open word and it would default to the comment setting and it would block a lot of stuff on Explore. Um, if just one or two people reported and maybe they didn't include what device they were on, that would have been a much harder troubleshoot for us. But because enough people reported and we saw pretty quickly, okay, this is, all people on Android phones that are having a problem, it was very easy for us to track that problem down, research what the problem was, and then put in a fix. We didn't have to go through all of the possible devices and all of the possible browsers to see where this might be a problem. Um, so using the bug form, continue to use it, even if it's a known issue, uh, the more information we have, the better. You are not harassing me, I promise, I promise, you're not harassing me. Uh, the more information, the better. I can't help you. Don't. Uh, and sometimes people will include more or different information in the bug report uh, that will give us sort of a new idea about how to go about something. So never underestimate your your feedback. Please, please, please continue to use the bug form. I will post it uh, to the comments here when I'm done. I'm also going to look at a survey. There's a couple features we're thinking about. We want your idea on. Uh, we have a uh, an idea for a, uh, a an ability to post in, instead of just a person. So if somebody posts something that you're really interested in, and you want to get notifications about that post, is that something you guys are interested in? What does that look like? Uh, I'll put in a question about that new comments above thing. Does it seem like you're interested in that feature? I've got a couple ideas. Post a survey, try to get some more feedback as we develop. Uh, just a quick summary of the bugs that are right now, for those of you that didn't want to listen to all of it, totally understand. Uh, links for the two harbors notifications are going to the wrong page. They're going to Decora. That's being worked on. If you, uh, if you archive will comment, is coming back in the next release. We're working on needing refresh to see new posts. We're working on people having Uh, opening up larger and the light box like this. Uh, some fix for that. When work you through getting access to your account back. Um, and then uh, he was having issues having photos log him out, please email us. I want to know what device you're on and help you out with that one. Um, there's also mark all is red is not working from the notification page. So we're working on that one. And then some people are not able to scroll in the bell icon to see all of their comments from the soon. A lot of bug and then that uh, some very we're always here to help and thank you guys for going on this.
journey with us.